Hello, Earth Sign. I'm Earth Signs. Air Signs. <laughs> this is going to be your elemental air reading for November 2018. Um, so this is going to be for all Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius people. This is a um, general reading and the messages will not resonate with everyone. In order to gain uh, more insight into your situation does require a personal reading. And in a personal reading, I take your name uh, and your birth date and the name and the birth date of the person you want to read on and meditate on that. And that's how we pull the cards. Now, having said that, I am offering, I do this once a year. It's called the Pay What You Want. And what it is, is for a donation, you get to get a three card reading for me. One question. It is a video reading. So you will get an opportunity to download that video to keep it and view it as long as you want. Um, it starts today. I'm taking bookings today. It runs until November 4th. After that, um, I won't do it again until next year. So this is something that I always like to do every year. Um, I normally only announce it to the website members, but I decided that this year I would try to open it up a bit more to give other people an opportunity. So if you want to get a reading from me, um, here's your opportunity to do so. Again, that is one question, three cards, video, okay, for a donation. So uh, the best way to get in on this is to click the I here uh, in the right-hand corner. That is going to take you over to the website. Sign up for the free newsletter because the last call is coming out today in the newsletter and it will have the link to the donation page and once you make your donation that will redirect you back to the um, booking form okay um, now we have some very um, exciting astrological weather happening uh, Uranus is retrograde at two degrees I'm sorry at zero degrees Taurus it is in opposition against Venus retrograde at zero degrees Scorpio Taurus rules your personal finances your movable possessions it rules the stock markets 401k bank accounts okay and Scorpio rules um, those deadly serious financial agreements that you have but they have a sexual component to it and what I mean by that is that this could be the idea of you uh, getting married to someone but knowing that full well uh, divorce may show up right so then there's going to be child support, alimony, um, there's insurance payments, there's mortgage payments, things that you have to deal with. Whenever there's an opposition, the second wheel, the second house opposing the eighth house, <coughs> oppositions mean that you are either going to be conflicted within yourself or that there's actually somebody or a situation working against you. So this could also include businesses and charities, <coughs> things of that nature, even if it's just a side hustle, okay? Now, Venus will be retrograding back into one of its co-ruling signs, which is uh, Libra. Libra is about partnerships. So this is marriages. This is business friendships. Uh, I mean, business partnerships, friendships, and familial relationships. Um, but it also is known as the house of legality. So this could be divorces, separations, bankruptcies, um, uh people being written out of wills, uh, things of that nature, renegotiating your, your mortgage or your loans or whatever the case may be. Um, the reason why this is such a, a, a weird kind of a time is because we have Mercury who is in its pre-shadow retrograde phase. He's in the sign of Scorpio right now. And Scorpio, Mercury and Scorpio is about digging deep, getting to that information, penetrating things, investigation, um, into these particular matters. I think that it really will behoove you. That's why I use asteroid astrology. Asteroid astrology works for the real world. I'm not just looking at your birth chart and trying to tell you what kind of person you are. Okay. I'm trying to give you some information that's going to actually help you in everyday real life. So I've been warning people about Uranus and Taurus since last year. I've been telling you this, this aspect is coming up and it is here. And so what you've been seeing, the wild swings in the market, whether you have stocks and bonds or not if you got a 401k you've taken some losses but you may have also gained some things tech stocks um medical stocks scientific stocks those areas are really being affected because that's what um 
and inventions because that's what Uranus rules. Um, but at the same time, um, this could be the idea that the company that you've been working for all of these times has been investing your money, that Scorpio, has been investing your money in, in other things. And now suddenly you've taken a loss. Um, this aspect is going to be Uranus and Taurus is going to be happening for the next seven years. So all of those tariffs and trade wars and the renegotiations of things like NAFTA, the Trans-Pacific, uh, the Trans Trans-Pacific Alliance, NATO, these things are going to affect you, your bottom line. Eventually that crap's going to trickle down and touch you in your bottom line. Wait till Christmas comes. Okay. And you want to buy gifts for your kids. And normally you get that crap at, at Walmart. Okay. <laughs> and all of a sudden the prices have shot up through the roof. Or there's an embargo and the gifts can't get there on time. Why do I say that? Because we also have Mercury about to retrograde into Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius rules uh, your belief systems, your philosophy. So this is whether or not you believe in astrology or tarot cards or whether you don't believe in anything, whether you're an atheist, okay? It rules foreigners. Um, and not just foreigners in terms of people from other countries who speak other different languages, but people who are different from you. Uh, whether you come from a higher socioeconomic background or whether you come from the hood, all right? Uh, it rules higher learning and higher education. So this is not necessarily about college educations, but this is the idea of expanding your mind, gaining more knowledge to achieve the things that you want to do and broaden your horizon. So it's travel of the mind. Um, it also rules the internet, publishing, imports and exports. And wherever you find Mercury slowing down, that means that things are going to be going backwards and forwards. There's going to be confusion. Um, there's going to be drop calls. Um, there's an opposition from Sagittarius to Gemini. So when Mer and Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. So the planet that rules Gemini is going retrograde opposite it. And what that means is that instead of trying to focus, if things start to go backwards, instead of focusing all of your energy on trying to fix that, concentrate on, on what's more locally and closer to you. Gemini rules communications. Um, it rules the written word, the spoken word, images, video, text. Um, it does rule gadgets, uh, electronic gadgets. Um, it rules, um, and Mercury rules commerce, travel, um, those same things, the, um, um, the written word, the spoken word. So we're talking about text messages, faxes, documents, emails face-to-face -face conversations, okay? So these things are going to be affected. And this Mercury retrograde phase is going to last all the way through December. It'll be ending before Christmas, thank goodness. But for those of you, please don't fear a Mercury retrograde. Any planet, no matter what the planet is that goes into retrograde, it just simply means that the thing that that planet rules or represents is something you're going to, the retrograde means you're going to have to go over that shit again and again. You're going to have to rework it. You're going to have to reevaluate. Is this really what I want to do? Is this really what I want to work for? How am I really going to get this? What do I need to change about my plan? Who do I need to contact? Who do I need to drop? Um, Venus is not just about love. Venus is about, uh, it is the relationship planet. So in order for us to get anything done in the world of business and commerce and also in get, getting support from those, we have to be able to relate to people in a harmonious way fair, balanced way so that we can win them over to our sides to do whatever it is that we <laughs> need to do. All right. So with that being said, um, website members, uh, you are really doing yourself a great disservice if you don't get in there and read those articles. Um, and the reason why I say that is there's over 400 articles there. Now, I also have the Slack um, app. This is a free app. You don't need to be a website member to join. Um, you can contact me through the support group ticket on the on the website. Send me your email address and I will send you the invite. This is where we discuss tarot cards, astrology, and uh, the metaphysics. Um, it is not a place where I'm doing readings. It's not like Instago, so please don't be trying to get me to do no readings or asking me about some reading that you did for yourself. If you want to learn more about the interpretation of a card, uh, that's the place to come. If you want to know more about the planets, who they are, what they mean, what's the myth and the stories behind them so that you can see the outcome of something, that's the place to come. If you want to know about 
uh, removing negative energy or increasing your protections or um, trying to bring about a better harmonious atmosphere for yourself on this plane, the metaphysical, uh, then that is where you go. So you can join me there for these discussions. Um, with that said, let's put these cards down. What we have here is the Nine of Pentacles who has presented herself upside down. There's a Three of Wands. There's an Eight of Swords. Huh. There's an Ace of Wands. Here's a Ten of Pentacles. I get the feeling that for some of you, your family comes in or there's a group of people. This could be that charity, that business organization that I was talking about. There's some association. Something is not right here. There is the King of Wands. So perhaps a fire sign male. Or simply the idea of going out and getting something. Just doing it. He represents typically an entrepreneur. Now I have a King of Swords. So I'm dealing with two males. This could be some kind of business deal or negotiation. Okay. That's what I was just talking about. Here's a Three of Swords. Now I have two threes here. Okay. Obviously something, you planned on something, you set out to do it. Um, maybe you yourself use someone else's resources or, or someone gave you access to their resources or maybe you were trying to do something to help out your family or this group, but something goes not right. Remember I said that just from looking at that card. And here's the moon. And there is no clarity on this situation whatsoever. Someone's feeling sorry for themselves for sure. Well, there's our Venus and Scorpio aspect. That's what this card represents, Venus and Scorpio. That person is in relief in this card. So we don't know if this person is actually, if this is a nightmare scenario for this person, or this is someone who's fantasizing about all of these things that they want to get. But they don't know what to do first. <laughs> right? So this card, this is having a lot of choices to deal from. Sometimes this is, can be about, in effect, kind of putting your head in the sand and not wanting to deal with all the things you have to deal with. This is dreaming about something but never really doing anything about it. But this card says positively, if you can identify that most important thing, then you can work your way around to getting the rest of these things. Two threes speak to a small but pleasant surprise that comes across this way. <clears throat> but two threes also speak to excessive cheating and flirting. And, you know, I don't know if maybe you are between two male figures, if you are, uh, take the role of the female or are the female in the relationship. These are two separate energies. This guy is more passionate and outgoing and gregarious, fun. This guy is more cold and distant, logical, and doesn't really allow his emotions to dictate what he feels is right. He's going to always do what is most reasonable. Maybe not a lot of fun, but there's something to be said for that. Now, sometimes an eight will show up when it says that if there's a text message or an email or something like that, phone call that you've been waiting on, you're going to get it. And so this could be the idea of right now, you know, you, whatever this thing is that you have, you're planning on, you're trying to move forward with, you haven't gotten the news that you needed to yet. So, and, and you don't see it coming. And so since you don't have any clarity, you can't see, you don't know, you're not making any moves and you're beginning to feel sorry for yourself.
I feel that this is, for some of you, will be triggered by this Taurus moon. Um, and then we have a new moon in Scorpio. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how that new moon will be playing out against Uranus and Taurus or Mercury and retrograde oppositions or what have you. <clears throat> but new moons are typically D-days. In other words, something like something occurs on a D-day, but it's something that you don't see and, and you didn't plan for. Okay. Sometimes you have to wait to see how that's going to play out. Why? Because the moon is the fastest moving body in the sky. Every 2.4 days, it moves into a new sign. <clears throat> And so maybe what this is saying in one respect is even though you don't see any change or you're afraid to make that move, please garner your strength and your energy as you go through this full moon. And something may, be, may come up for you around this full moon. Definitely something that you don't see. That's a yes. You are stuck in this situation, yes. And there's no clarity on it and it may not work itself out it may be through this could be a complete moon cycle all the way into december and we do know that mercury in sagittarius will be uh retrograde uh, until december like the middle of december right before christmas now i can't look at these two cards because they are court card people okay and all I have is one major arcana card. So what can I look at? I can look at the nine of pentacles, uh, the three, the eight, the ace, the ten, and the three of swords as they relate to this moon card. The first thing I want to do, however, is to look at this. Y'all know I don't re read reverse cards. And so I'm having difficulty understanding what she's trying to say to me. Except that the situation is upside down. <laughs> That I can see. <laughs> Excuse me. It speaks of fear, insecurity, deception, a lack of faith, danger, and threats. It is a message to think clearly and carefully before making any major decisions or choices. Do not be rash or hasty as thought and consideration are needed. Well, I dare fear that some of you just kind of rushed in. It speaks of false bravado, mistruths, myth, mistruths, and dishonest dealings. The reverse nine of pentacles implies that you may be involved in an underhanded or deceitful venture in an effort to make financial gains. There it is. It tells you to make sure all of your plans are worthy of undertaking. Discard those which are not feasible or viable. It is a message telling you not to become involved in gossip, rumor mongering, and spiteful behavior as this may be turned back onto you. You are also encouraged to steer clear of other people's woes and gossip. Otherwise, you may become embroiled in a very uncomfortable situation that will be difficult to escape from. It indicates that fear and insecurity may undermine present achievements, leading to a lack of any real satisfaction. It may be foretelling of the possible loss of a home and or friendship. So it is time to reanalyze your goals and desires as things have not been going to plan as of late. Nine of Pentacles appearing reverse may be telling of a dependency upon another person and sharing the due credit for an achievement. It implies that it may be time for you to reanalyze, okay? There's that Venus retrograde, Uranus retrograde, Mercury retrograde. Reanalyze your true goals and desires. It also tells you to ask for help and or guidance when needed rather than forging ahead and making mistakes. It indicates that you may be entangled in a dis difficult situation, uncomfortable or unsatisfactory situation, so use your common sense to resolve this issue. It may be implying the loss of a friendship, a partnership, or something of great value to you. Appearing reversed to Nine of Pentacles asks you to consider everything and not make any rash decisions or choices. Do not become involved in rumors or malicious gossip as it may be turned back on you. And this could be within the context of a, of a friendship, I mean, a, fa a familial relationship. Maybe it's work. 
there's there's a money work component here okay now let me see if it tells me with three swords cards it is telling you not to spend money frivolously or carelessly be careful with money and financial matters and keep a rein on your spending Isn't that something? Let's look at this Three of Wands. Isn't that something? These cards, I tell you. And they are on fire today. Nothing about the Three of Wands. Eight of Swords with this Moon card. And there's four Swords, three Swords cards here. Okay, so um, I'm looking at the Eight of Swords with this moon card tells me nothing I'm going to look at this ace of wands a wands is simply just an opportunity this could be to increase your position your social standing this is a uh, I forget what the energy what is it, I think it's a Capricorn card um Wands, where am I? Right there. An opportunity to join forces with someone. A new business opportunity. Nothing. Now let me look at this Three of Swords here. <coughs> This is one person that you're dealing with. Could be somebody, we're talking about a Mercury retrograde, somebody all of a sudden changing their mind about something. Maybe they've heard something. I don't see it. This could be one aspect of the same person. It could also be two different people. Well, let's just go to the Sibylas. You know, um, this is a Saturn and Libra card. Definitely can speak of a separation, one that you that's that's coming, and maybe you're trying to avoid it in some way. And swords represent thoughts, belief, perceptions, ideas, and or communication. Sometimes this can be the aspect of thinking you know it all. Let me look at this Eight of Swords here. Because definitely no matter how this plays out, the situation is that somebody feels stuck in a situation, but that card can also be the victimized, the victim card or the martyr card. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Dona Maritata, the married woman, woman with children. The Giovanni Fanciulla. Now there's two people here, two women. And the Fortuna card. Changing circumstance. Fortuna is the wheel of fortune. But sometimes when you're up, uh, you're on your way down. And sometimes when you've been down, the only place for you to go back up, uh, it is neither punishment nor reward. It is simply the way that it is. Let me look at this Three of Swords. Then I'm going to look at this Nine of Pentacles upside down. Because it speaks to a fear. And this could be, you know, now that I'm looking at this, this could be the fear of um, maybe getting married or joining forces with somebody. We go from a Dona Maritata to a Giovanni Fanchula. They're, they're two different types of women. One's a wife. The other one is, is a single woman. 
and the changing fortune or the changing nature of it. Three of Swords. Lies and hidden intentions. This is a fake happiness of the heart. Remember I said it could be somebody who suddenly changes the way that they feel. It's like turned off like a spigot. Speranza. Remember I said this is a disappointment in something. This card is hope. You don't get what you hoped for. There's something lacking in this. But this is also a fear. Wow. Let's look at this nine of pentacles. Because she presented herself upside down. I don't know if this is being booted out of a family or being booted out of a group. Get that it was through something that you did. It's a coins card. Conversation. Pleasant. Negotiation of some sort. Some kind of contract. Marriage. Nuptials. the anxiety and the fear and the worry. I really can't tell you what this is about. So I'm going to look at this moon. Uh, that's a very loaded set of cards. This could be the idea that you were making plans to go ahead and get married. You started inviting your friends, telling everybody, making those plans. Uh, everything seemed to be going well. Maybe you had support from somebody to help you and then suddenly the shit hit the fan. Yeah, that's what that says. Because there's somebody else that has entered the picture. Wow, isn't that something... Maybe you've already spent a lot of money making these plans and then it falls through. Communication, but there's nobody there. Lecherezza, the tact and the diplomacy. This is somebody's changing sensitivity. Remember, I keep saying that. <clears throat> and the superbia, hubris and pride, vanity someone showing their true colors. What's interesting is that these cards kind of mirror each other. Feathers. There's something about feathers. Okay? Even though these are wings, wings are not really feathers, but they are one, not for butterflies, but bird wings are made up of feathers. Are they not? Wings are made up of feathers. Hmm. Wow. I don't know if this is about maybe someone's self-esteem. I, I, I'm not sure what that means. I, I think it means that at some point um, you're going to have to either dig deep and figure this out for yourself or that there's going to come some kind of opportunity for you to tactfully and diplomatically, I don't know, save your pride, engage your pride, or maybe see what some of these true colors are all about. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, formulate one question for the angel answer. I mean, for the, this is a romance thing, so I'm going to pull one romance card for you. Uh... There is no timing in the tarot. Um, this may not, in one respect, be a romantic relationship. This could be in a business context or friendship or familial. 
but something is definitely not right. And I don't think you're going to get any clarity on this until after the new year. Okay. One more time. Oh, Jesus, do I have the cards all upside down? I can never tell these cards apart. Hold on. <laughs> One more time. Wow, that's, that's uh, interesting air signs. Psyche, the soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. Wow, you know what I always say about soulmate relationships, right? Those shits are not easy. You, know, you get those some people who, oh, we never had an argument. You know, but how many crappy relationships did they probably have to go through? <laughs> to find that and then some people just automatically they've done the work in previous lifetimes and when they meet the person they marry them and they're together but that's because they it, it has taken pre many previous lifetimes for them to get it right so <clears throat> soulmate relationships are not always easy okay you know and, and we are in, in a sense kind of like that seven of cups under the illusion that we meet that person and we ride off into the sunset and live with them happily ever after. They never show us in the movie what happens after the credits roll and they ride off in the sunset together. We don't know if they stay together or if they end up killing each other. We don't know that. We just make the assumption that everything is hunky-dory. Well, that's a fantasy, is it not? You chose this card because you wonder if a certain person is your soulmate and the answer is yes. As we all do, we have many soulmates, beings with whom you share a mystical soul connection and life path. Soulmates incarnate with the plan of coming together for mutual spiritual and personal growth. As you suspected, the person you're inquiring about is one of yours. That sense of familiarity and comfort you felt when you first met also indicates your soulmate bond. This card sometimes come to those who ask, when will I meet my soulmate or will I ever meet my soulmate as validation that this will occur. Many times this is a person whom you already know. Although romantic sparks didn't fly at first, you'll have another opportunity to explore passion together. But I want you to also be very, very careful that this does not mean necessarily that that person is meant to stay in your life. Okay, so that's what I have for you air signs for November. This is going to be, I think, uh, an exciting kind of a rock and roll kind of a time. Come over and join me uh, for the PPW. Um, sign up for the free newsletter. You can also join me on Slack. Um, and so until next time. Namaste.